on Shruti. Uh, I'll try to keep this session as informative as other sessions uh, that we had in Kolkata Pune today. Uh, and uh, let's start. So today I'll be talking about Web Development 2.0, Embracing the AI Revolution. My name is Ulka. I am a software engineer at Axelerant. Um, I am uh, absolutely obsessed with K-Dramas and Manga series. Uh, I love spending time with my dogs, uh, I and Chichi. I am a proud parent, uh, dog parent. I have around 6 years of experience in web development, especially in Google. I have been with Axelerant since the uh, past 4 years now. We are Axelerant. The integrated global delivery partner for agencies and customers that puts care into employee happiness, engineering excellence, and customer success. So, if you are interested in um, any of our services, please reach out to us uh, at accident.com or you can reach out to us at uh, our booth as well. So, in the past few months, I've, been, I've started looking into these uh, AI technologies. And uh, I saw that it, it, AI has um, taken its roots in multiple different uh, uh, sectors. There is in health sector, it has taken its root in health sector, retail, um, uh, marketing, uh, e commerce websites, etc. But then I noticed that uh, AI is not a big, uh, there aren't many talks about AI in web development area. And this is my um, attempt uh, with, the, with that small contribution towards raising the awareness of AI in web development. So today I will be talking about the comprehensive overview of AI. Uh, here we will be talking uh, about what exactly AI is and what it includes. Um, how to enhance your functionality in web applications uh, using these AI tools. How to integrate these AI tools within your web applications. What are the challenges of those integrations and what is going to be the future of AI in web development? Understanding AI artificial intelligence. Now when I talk about AI, can someone tell me what comes to your head when you think about artificial intelligence? How do you understand that term? Can someone tell me? Anyone? Cognitive yeah. intelligence. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah? It's a machine system which is trying to mimic human and with that it is trying to learn Absolutely, absolutely. Basically a human can think, uh, make decisions on its own. They can interpret, the human mind can interpret the data. And artificial intelligence creates such machines that, ca that can do all of these functions on its own without any human intervention. The most basic and simple example for this is Siri. Uh, many of these digital uh, voice assistants that we have out there. You just need to ask uh, them some question and immediately it will give you the answer. For example, let's say you ask Siri, hey Siri, call Ulka. It will go through all of the data from, you know, from your mobile and uh, call the number that is saved with name Ulka. So that is how this artificial intelligence works. Now, what are its subfields? The subfields that I've mentioned here, these are the majorly talked about fields. There are multiple other fields as well apart from this. Now, what are they, what do these fields do exactly? What do they mean? Machine learning. Again, I noticed that artificial intelligence and machine learning, both of these terms are often misinterpreted. Whenever we talk about big data, or uh, data analytics, any any related topic uh, in this industry, we tend to confuse both of these terms. We tend to recall or repeat these terms, but that is not the case. ML is actually a subfield of AI. It's not the same. In machine learning, a machine uh, basically learns from its from the examples and its past experiences. Um, for example, um, let's say. Uh, in your emails, you get multiple emails, right, that are not uh, related or you have not subscribed to that particular newsletter and you mark that as a spam 
and next time when so, such email comes to your uh, comes to your email sorry um, uh, whenever they send uh, the email from that particular address to your inbox <coughs> it doesn't end up in your inbox it ends up in your spam <coughs> i'm sorry uh, it ends up in your spam uh, folder basically Neural networks. Neural networks are actually inspired by biological neural networks, our brain, and it is one of the most crucial uh, element of AI. Why? Because it uses patterns uh, to recognize uh, to recognize what is going on with the data and give you the most accurate and uh, answer and with high uh, accuracy and less errors. Now. AN, when, when we uh, implement any ANN feature, in the beginning, it doesn't really um, uh, understand exactly which models to use or which weights to use, which data subsets to use in order to give you the correct answer. But eventually, it learns from uh, its wrong answers and uh, gives you the correct result. For example, um, let's say infants, uh, whenever any human is born, they don't really understand the baby doesn't understand what what exactly is going on around, uh, in their surroundings, right? But eventually they will <laughs> make mistakes, learn from it, and then um, become the intellectuals. Deep learning. So, so in deep learning, we actually handle a model handles large amount of uh, large amount of data sets, and that requires. Um, High, uh, high configuration systems. So, in deep learning, the algorithm actually uh, repeats the tasks, and with each iteration, your algorithm edits and uh, uh, changes itself in order to understand exactly what is the right uh, output for your user queries. For example, um, let's say we have um, in, in india we many of us uh, people speak english right but then in different region when, whenever a person from different region is speaking english their accent is different how does this uh, how do these smartphones uh, understand exactly what the user is trying to say they use deep learning for that Cognitive computing. This is relatively a uh, new term that was that is introduced in AI. Cognitive computing basically tries to imitate uh, the human thought process. It uses the models, uh, computer uh, computerized models, to deploy uh, that are deployed in order to imitate the human thinking process. In cognitive computing, um, the algorithms, basically these NLP and ANN algorithms are used for pattern recognition. And um, why, why should we use these, uh, <coughs> why should we use these cognitive computing uh, algorithms? Now, the answer to that is, it helps initiate and accelerate the complex function, uh, functions and uh, problem solving within human and a machine. The best example for this again can be uh, digital assistants like Siri and uh, Google assistants, Bixi, etc. Next is human vision, uh, sorry, computer vision. Computer vision um, basically tries to, again, it tries to uh, imitate the human vision. It works like a human vision. For example, there are multiple, let's say there are multiple images and uh, videos in your system. These are uh, analyzed and interpreted in order to extract the data. For example, let's say this slide. Uh, if I upload this slide as a data in my model, and uh, if I try to extract the information from this image, it will, it will try to extract what are the colors that are used in this image. <coughs> What is the what does the text say? What is it related to? And accordingly, it will give you the answers. Natural language processing. Natural language processing uh, creates the methods using which a computer uh, can communicate using the human. <laughs> A computer can communicate 
communicate using the human languages like English, Dutch, or whichever language that we um, basically assign in that particular model. This particularly helps in seamless communication between a human and a machine. And in turn, it helps uh, to give you the logical responses to the, uh, whatever queries that you have raised to that particular system. Now that we understand exactly what AI is and what are its subfields, major subfields, let's understand why exactly we should use those uh, functionalities within our systems. Content generation. Nowadays, content generation um, has been uh, has become really easy because of chat GPT. We use chat GPT most of the times whenever we have to generate any content. In fact, I have to definitely get help from chat GPT for this session as well. Um, so basically, it helps AI tools based on uh, uh, content generation tools based on AI. They help automate this process. We, we can create blogs that are uh, that a user prefers or that um, using which um, using the requirements of the user. Now, for example, these AI tools also, you can also create uh, news articles or product descriptions based on what the target audience uh, is, what are the special keywords that need to be there in the content, or uh, whether there needs to be any desired style behind that content. Personalization. Personalization basically um, is when uh, AI algorithm helps, AI algorithm helps with user behavior analysis and it tracks exactly what the user uh, is trying to um, uh, what, what the user is trying to interpret, what are they trying to identify from the system. And eventually it gives you those recommendations tailored to the individual needs. For example, um, e-commerce websites, there are multiple e-commerce websites that are now using images as tag instead of uh, keywords. Usually what we do is we use keywords in SEO as well, we use keywords. But with personalization in AI, we use, now use images and that helps uh, whenever we try to search any um, of the products using any images uh, that's when we know that it is using personalization in the system. Another best example for this is uh, Pinterest. So for example, um, whenever we search for any content on Pinterest, um, it basically uh, checks exactly which image or it, which video you are trying to search and it eventually gives you that related content. Chatbots and virtual assistants. This is a rising trend. We all know that uh, there are multiple, almost every uh, other uh, website has chatbots uh, integrated within them. These chatbots actually help with the uh, businesses. Why? Because it helps uh, improve the customer engagement. Virtual assistants use NLP uh, program in order to understand exactly what the user queries are and uh, give you the most relevant answers uh, for all of those queries. Another uh, advantage of using chatbots and virtual assistants is they are available 24 7. So that reduces the wait time and increases your, the customer satisfaction. In turn, it helps with uh, increasing the efficiency of the product and business. Image and video recognition. As I said, uh, Pinterest uses image and uh, video recognition in order to give you the personalized content. Uh, for example, if there is one image that you have, uh, uh, I, I also gave an example with uh, the image that I was using for subfields. It basically image and video recognition algorithm extracts all of that information and gives you the data. It, it, that there could be multiple PPTs, multiple uh, MS Word files uh, that you have uploaded in the system and it tracks all of that information and gives you the result. User behavior analysis. Uh, there are uh, again another multiple AI functionalities that help with user behavior analysis. 
it helps uh, it basically tracks the user clicks what the where the user is scrolling which are the pages that user is uh, you know uh, visiting more often or are there any sections of a particular page that a user is visiting all of that is tracked using behavior user behavior analysis yeah using ai algorithms how does that help um, I'm sure many, uh, all of you, almost all of you have used Facebook, right? We, um, we, we, we have, we connect with friends. We go through some pages that uh, are created on Facebooks. Um, there could be some news articles uh, that are published on the Facebook. Facebook tracks all of that user data and engagements, and eventually it gives you the personalized data in your feed. I'm sorry. Sentiment analysis. This is again very uh, exciting feature that AI provides. So this is mostly based on text. Um, AI tools, uh, AI tools analyze the text in order to understand exactly what the emotion or attitude is behind that particular text. For example, um, in e-commerce websites, whenever we shop, we uh, sometimes, not always, we uh, usually put in the comment, right? Uh, we give the review to a product, exactly what, how you used it, whether it was good, whether it was bad, whether there were any, if there were any concerns. We also give star ratings to those products. Now, sentimental uh, sentiment analysis comes into picture with here because these AI algorithms go through those all of that uh, all of that comment data and understands exactly what the user concerns are. And if, if, accordingly, they can change their uh, strategies, marketing strategies or product uh, strategies in order to improve their business. Fraud detection and security. Now, the best example for this is online banking. Um, let's say uh, you are doing some transaction uh, using either net banking or uh, you have used your credit card or debit card, you have made some transaction, you always receive one SMS or email, either one of or, or both. But at the end, you also receive a link or phone number where you can uh, report the transaction if it's not made by you. That is how the uh, bank collects all the data. And once you report the uh, transaction that it is not made by you, the on, um, online banking uh, security is uh, uh, alerted about that and the action is taken into consideration. Automated web testing. Now, usually a quality assurance engineer has to, uh, whenever any feature is created, a quality uh, assurance engineer has to, uh, you know, test that particular feature on different browsers, on uh, with different screen sizes, um, but with automated web testing, we can implement these, uh, we can use these AI tools and implement the features to automate this whole data, whole uh, process. And that helps in saving the time. It also helps with fast deployments because again we are saving time. Um, what it does is, it, it, these AI tools help uh, with regression tests. They create this simulated environment and um, try to imitate how user is going to use that feature and accordingly it checks the functionality. Now, these were all the benefits uh, that we discussed, but how are those benefits affecting the uh, AI developers? Because there, were, there was automated web testing that, that was being done automatically, there is content generation that is being uh, automatically now, how does that affect the developers? More creativity. With AI, there are multiple people here, uh, or maybe out there, who are who think that AI is going to take over take over all the jobs. That is not going to happen because uh, even Prasad uh, in the in the morning Prasad shared that uh, you. Uh, a, an AI tool is dead inside. It cannot think, it cannot, sorry, it can think, it cannot feel uh, the emotions just like human does. It doesn't have that intuition power that a human has. And uh, in fact, uh, eventually, 
the the AI integrations help boost these uh, creativities within the developers. Uh, they can they can have uh, they have innovative ideas these days to implement the, uh, implement the future. New opportunities. Now that AI is introduced, along with that, many other technologies are also introduced. There is machine learning, there is data science, uh, NLP, and all of that. And we can specialize uh, within those all of those uh, different technologies. Improved efficiency. Now, uh, just like automated web testing, there are multiple tasks uh, a developer can automate. For example. The, um, peer reviews, or maybe there is some simple debugging that needs uh, uh, th that is repetitively done, or uh, or maybe um, the, uh, what else can be done? <laughs> code reviews, right? Code reviews can be done, um, can be automated, and by doing that, again, a developer can save its uh, save their time and use that time in implementing complex functions or uh, in implementing their innovative ideas. Now that we understand exactly why we should use AI tools in our system, let's understand how to use these uh, AI tools in our, our, your websites. Is there anyone who has tried uh, using AI tools, any of the AI tools? Uh, have you used that with Drupal or any other system? Any other other systems. It's actually it is a uh, self-developed AI tool of an organization mm -hmm. to uh, use, uh, use to make develop the AI systems by less coding, with less coding, without without more coding. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone? Uh, use for content generation. Content generation, right? So. Let's understand the ways, just like uh, I didn't get your name. Mm -hmm. Just like Mayu said that he used uh, a small uh, code in order to use that AI, uh, in order to use the AI functionalities. Um, uh, another person here has used uh, it for content generation. Let's understand exactly how we can implement those services within our system, not just Drupal, but with all the other systems. JavaScript libraries and APIs. There are multiple different libraries uh, that have been created uh, for uh, implementing these AI features. For example, we have uh, Google Cloud AI, we have IBM, IBM Watson API. It's, this one is quite uh, famous nowadays. Uh, I, I'm, I think many of you have might, might have already heard about it. Uh, then there is Azure uh, API, Microsoft Azure AI. So these are all the libraries that you can integrate in your system by making very simple API calls. It, it doesn't have to be complex. You just have to make simple API calls in order to integrate these features. And then eventually you can get the functionalities like NLP, sentimental analysis, and um, uh, neural networks. Backend server integration. Another name for this is decoupled. Um, if you have worked with Drupal before, you have for sure, uh, you must have for sure uh, heard about Decouple. So it's basically um, a backend server is created using Python or PHP or Node.js um, or any other backend language. And uh, it also operates all the AI operation. And there is another frontend system that uh, communicates with backend system in order to give you the results. AI widgets and embeddable components. These are pre-built AI widgets and embeddable components. I think this is something that Mayur has implemented. These basically, uh, th th these uh, widgets basically can be implemented by using small snippets. You get, uh, uh, you, you are given some small JavaScript snippet. You need to add that to your header or footer and the whole feature will be implemented on your system. Mostly this is done for chat, uh, chatbots and uh, voice assistants. Webhooks and event-based uh, integration. Now, AI triggers events in order to uh, communicate with the web, uh, web hooks. For example, let's say there is one implemented uh, implementation that has been done 
with web hooks uh, in order to give you the recommendations um, to, uh, uh, the product recommendations according to the user's behavior and their uh, uh, past experiences and uh, history AI as a service platform AI platforms uh, basically offer these simple AI services. Uh, again, ChatGPT can be an answer for this. You, if you want to integrate ChatGPT in your system, it's quite easy. They provide the API. You just need to integrate to your system, make simple calls, API calls, and you will get the uh, AI integration in your system. Why use Drupal uh, to integrate these AI functionalities? Now, Drupal is an open source platform. It's free. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, easy to integrate uh, AI tools within the system. It's easy to create custom uh, AI uh, functionalities in Drupal system. Built in AI capabilities, there are multiple different modules out there now. Um, most of the, uh, them I see are in stable and secure, some are, some are in secure uh, releases as well. So, you can use all of those modules in order to implement the features. Community support. Drupal has huge community support. If you need any help, you just need to raise the query on the Drupal.org um, uh, platform and you will get your answers. Apart from this, Drupal is also quite reliable. Uh, the architecture of Drupal is ro uh, quite robust, it's, it has better scalability, it's secure to use and uh, that are the reasons why you should try using Drupal for your AI applications. Now with Drupal, how can you implement these AI features? You can, again, you can use the uh, ways that we discussed in the last slide. Apart from that, you can use the modules. Modules are basically the extendable functionalities. You can either use contrib modules and extend the functionality if you want something else apart from that. If it's a new functionality, you can create your own custom modules in Drupal. APIs. With core Drupal from Drupal 8, 9, 10, we have these uh, core REST APIs that we can use for API integrations. We can create services, custom services in order to implement these integrations. And then there is decoupled Drupal, just like we discussed in the last slide, this slide and uh, small snippets that we can add. In. These are some of the mod modules that we have uh, on Drupal.org that we can use in order to uh, implement the AI features. Chatbot API, again it's a chatbot. Open AI module, this has a lot many sub modules if you want to check that out. Intercom module. Auto recommend cache uh, content tags model. This one uses Node.js. So, if anyone of you has knowledge, uh, I would recommend giving it a try. Now, this open AI model, I've actually uh, tried to integrate it and have that in my system. So basically, uh, it's quite easy to use. This is that module. It has these many sub modules. You can use it for audio check uh, checks. You can use chat GPT. It enables interactions with the chat endpoints uh, using chat GPT API. It has DB log level for content generation, etc. So I'll be demonstrating one small part of this module because it is quite extensive. I have already enabled the uh, OpenAI CK Editor model. I will show you that as well. So here. These are all the modules that uh, this particular model provides, or the sub modules. And um, uh, enabled the CK editor integration model. You need to put in your key. Uh, the configuration is quite easy. You just need to go to the configuration from configuration, open AI settings. I won't be able to show you that form. Um, uh, but then you only need to add your API key, save the settings, and uh, you will have your features. 
For CK editor implementation, you have to go to content authoring and text formats in order to add that extension. If you have used CK editor before, we use those extensions while adding the content. So, let's go to basic HTML. And this is that extension I was talking about. So this, this was here, I dragged and dropped it here. And we have another option here where we need to enable this feature and save the settings. That's all. That, that is the, the, these are the only settings that we need in order to implement the CK editor settings. Now let's try to create one content. Mm, let's give it. And I am going to use this data here. Now, this doesn't really look that good, right? We can use OpenAI module in order to summarize all of this. So, for example, this is the extension that we added. You would summarize. And if you see here, it's working and it has uh, given you the summary and it also makes sense. So basically the model is working fine. Alright, now every coin has a flip side. We have seen how, what are the benefits of AI how you can integrate those uh, AI tools in your system. But then, what are the concerns behind that? Uh, when you integrate any AI system in your website, uh, are there any limitations? We are going to discuss those here. Data limitations. All these AI tools basically use uh, large data sets in order to give you the better, give you better result. It needs uh, better data. If the data isn't good, the, the results might also be biased and that cannot happen, right? So, here you can take an example of, um, let's say, dogs, dog breeds. Uh, in, 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 the, in our world, we have multiple dog breeds and if we want to implement a system wherein we are giving uh, one image to a system and asking them to identify which breed of dog that is, it will be difficult to consolidate all of that data, right? And it will be a lot time consuming as well. So that is one limitation of implementing AI. Integration complexity. Now, not a lot many people right now has that uh, expertise of implementing AI features. So for example, let's say there is one team uh, that is trying to implement uh, NLP based chatbot in that system. But then uh, they don't have any uh, team member who has that uh, that knowledge. So what what can they do? They they have to collaborate with some external expertise, right? And that uh, ends up with integration ex uh, complexity and delay in the uh, delivery of that particular feature. Model bias. Again, it comes to the data set. If your data set has biased information it will give you the biased uh, output. For example, let's say there is some um, job opening fair going on and uh, the team is using AI uh, tools in order to say uh, for selection. But then the data, training data that they are using has ethnicity uh, biased or gender biased data. So that is going to end up with um, unfair selection of the team member, right? Next is computational resources. Because we have to use these large data sets, we have to use the high uh, configuration web, uh, systems in order to implement uh, these algorithms and uh, in order to implement these efficient algorithms. So, if you want to, um, uh, if you want to use these high configured systems, that is going to end up in uh, you know costly machines. Right? And not everyone can have uh, that much financial power in order to implement a feature. For example, there could be some startups, there, there could be some 
small scale uh, team uh, that is trying to use the uh, that it, that is intending to use these uh, AI features, but then because of this financial constraint, they cannot do that. User acceptance again um, with AI comes concerns about privacy. Uh, with, uh, I'm sure many of you have used True Caller. So there many I even now there are many people who hesitate to add your personal data in True Caller uh, accounts because that data is used in order to give the um, the end user the data of your mobile number, right? And that raises the um, user concerns and hesitations. Maintenance. Now these. AI models needs continuous maintenance. Uh, it, it has to be uh, it has to be done efficiently. It takes a lot of development efforts, uh, and it again it would be time consuming for the developers. So, let's say for example there is uh, this news article website that we have. A user is uh, regularly reading through that website. But there is, uh, but there are two, three different topics uh, genre or genres that uh, uh, that that particular user is reading from. Now the AI algorithm has to uh, check exactly what uh, which articles that that particular user is reading in order to give that user personalized content in their feed. Right? If it's not done correctly. That user is going to get some random, random uh, article in their feed, and that cannot happen. Re regulatory compliance. There are multiple laws out there for AI, and that could that can be quite tricky and complex to understand. Even developers need to have the at least basic knowledge of that uh, those laws, and again that becomes complicated for a developer to implement the functionality. What is the future of AI in web development? Voice functionality. Now I tried to search for, uh, for a website which uses voice functionality. I couldn't find any. So if anyone of you knows, please do let me know. Um, and that's why I'm saying that it's in, still it's in uh, its infancy. Uh, but then if, you, if we use the voice uh, functionality in our website, it is going to offer you quick responses. Right. We, uh, we use on we use voice assist assistance on our, our mobile and we get the responses within seconds. So that would be really helpful for the users that are frequenting any websites. Easy search or navigation. Um, this is the mostly useful for visual impaired users. They can easily navigate through the website. Um, uh, they can search through the website, and it will be quite, quite helpful. Artificial design intelligence. Till now, even now, sometimes we uh, create these HTML uh, based pages or maybe some coded designs before we implement any feature, right? Before, before we try uh, implementing any, creating any website. But with artificial design intelligence, you only need to give a prompt to the system and it will give you the whole uh, design ready for your website. These uh, basically use machine learning um, algorithms in order to design in the uh, website. Um, Bix uses these algorithms to design the website. There is another um, application grid. Uh, you need to give them a prompt and it creates the whole website for you. Virtual reality. Virtual reality is basically when a system creates a simulated environment for you. It creates a 3D model for you to experience that particular feature. For example, you are uh, trying to look for a house and uh, you go to a website, you click on the feature and you'll be able to see yourself in that house and that can be quite exciting, right? There are multiple use cases like this. In fact, um, there is Dior website which uses uh, VR technology in order to uh, check how the makeup is looking on your face. So you can check that out if you are interested. In conclusion, 
I feel that um, implementing AI in your websites is always going to enhance your uh, functionalities. Yes, there are challenges, but there are benefits of using AI technologies as well. The future looks promising, so why not use it? Mm -hmm. And that's all. Any questions? Yes? So, you showed a couple of models for using chat GPT in open areas. So, does the compilation have option to switch off history via Google or does it use the history of your communication as well? Um, they don't. They haven't really implemented such fun such functionality. I have used couple of them. I didn't see any option. Again, uh, using our Drupal system and extending the model model, we can uh, implement that feature. But no, I didn't see any setting that can. Implement your own chat GPT and do that. Of course, of course. In Drupal, we have services, right? We can do, we can create custom services and implement the feature. Or uh, we just need uh, one. Um, pay it with open API and you will be able to implement the whole feature. Or, you know. Can you have a site search or site search by using ChatGPT or this AI? Um, I don't see any Drupal model for it, but with different other uh, technologies, I feel you can implement that feature. Any example? I, I, I don't really have a ready example yet. Uh, especially using ChatGPT, but uh, usually when we, when you use ChatGPT, you have to input some string, right? You have to input some uh, text, and it gives you the answer for that. So, depending on that information, I think you will be able to implement the search functionality for that. It can be a little bit tricky because with search, you have to actually figure out exactly what are uh, where those keywords are used. Um, um, I haven't exhaustively read through the documentation, so I won't be able to give you the answer immediately. But I will look through that and do reach out to me and give you the correct answer. Mm -hmm. So, in artificial design intelligence, so, uh, you said that it will design the entire person, right? So, uh, how does it really phrase it? Does it pick the design components from other areas, then there will be copyright issues? That depends on uh, which which uh, application that we are using for creating these uh, uh, designs. Basically, each application has its own rules and regulations. As I said, it's one of the limitation. When we use any AI feature, along with that comes some regulations and laws that are tricky to understand. We have to learn through all of those regulations before we use any technology. Whether there, there are going to be any copyright issues, whether it is okay to use any uh, copyright content that the AI system is generating. The challenge is it doesn't show you from where it's speaking, so you don't know whether it's copyrighted or Exactly, another limitation. Anyone else? What are the tools for web development right now using AI? Are there any tools available? Uh, tools as in different technologies? Uh, yes, we which can use AI for the web development. Are there any tools? Anything else? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I understand your question. Uh, so basically you are asking um, if, you, if, we, if your website is based on Drupal, what, what tools can you use in, yes. in order to integrate the system, right? So, in, as I said, in Drupal you can use modules, you can implement your own feature using uh, the APIs, um, the services and uh, the JavaScript. With uh, Python and uh, uh, Node.js, especially with Python, you have to import these libraries in order to implement. You don't really have readily available tools. Jupyter also we do that same thing that we import various libraries. Yes, yes. Uh, that's why I said that Drupal is easier to use. If, if you want to implement, if you want to try to implement any AI functionality, Drupal is easier to test that functionality because it's easy to incorporate those uh, tools within the system. Yes? Uh, 
also uh, do you have any tool name uh, which is used for the generic websites uh, like suppose I have insurance websites and using the user behavior using the capturing behavior from the one page to another page to reach out the last page I can offer in the best products as per the uh, user's uh, interest on in this particular stake and everything it's nothing but capturing the behavior of the user so is there any tool or uh, available where we can put those particular stake of the website or somewhere that gives me the uh, result with the, uh, using the user uh, using the user behavior thanks to uh, user behavior oh, Yeah, but he is specifically asking for a tool. Like uh, for content generation, we have ChatGPT. So, uh, similarly, is there any other tool for uh, user behavior analysis? I'm sorry, but I'm not aware of any tool. Again, I can uh, let you know later on. So, please do reach out. Anyone?